I think President Trump has done very well because what he's done is he's reflected consensus. He's, I think, showed a little bit of concession and a lot of compassion. Kamala Harris's state of California, you basically abortion anyone, anytime, anywhere, anyhow. Tim Waltz made it that way in Minnesota. Brian, that is not reflecting consensus for the people of California and Minnesota. I think if we can talk a little bit about those examples as well and have a science and medicine mm-hmm. conversation. Also, right. J.D. Vance, he's great on abortion. He talks about all those young women where he grew up who never knew they had another choice other than to get an abortion, who were told you're not good enough or rich enough or or, or smart enough to be a mother. So there's all kinds of choices that people should be expen- ex- extended to women who are afraid. I don't know which world Kellyanne Conway is living in. Like, I really am confused at this. The fact that she's on national television telling a lie that the entire world knows is a lie. I think one of the most important issues for the conservative movement is the right to life, right? If you're not willing to stand up for unborn babies in this country, then what else are you going to cut tail and run on when the going gets tough? If you're not willing to stand on that issue, I think it indicates your character is weak and you don't have the fortitude to actually serve the interests of our voters. So I'm proud to be 100% pro-life. I'm proud of the fact that I've had the left attack me for a long time for having the courage of my convictions. And you know what? When Mike Gibbons, they asked him whether he was pro-life, he said, no, I wouldn't call myself pro-life. I think that ultimately it should go to the woman's choice. Okay? That is the language of pro-abortion. He said he's not pro-life, he's pro-people. Ladies and gentlemen, pro-life is pro-people. That's the whole point of our position there. If you're not willing to stand up for the unborn, you don't deserve to be a conservative. And again, for 52 years, from the beginning of Roe v. Wade, people have wanted to get it out. And many presidents have tried, they were unable to do it. And I just want to thank six very brave and brilliant Supreme Court justices for doing it. What they did is very Donald Trump is not doing well with abortion issue. He's not doing well at all with the abortion issue. He knows that so much so that he's took a whole 180 degree turn on where he stands on abortion at this point. Like Ronald Reagan, I believe in the exceptions for rape, incest and life of the mother. Uh, I believe, you know, I believe strongly. I think that uh, that's a very important thing. I think when you don't, you have to follow your heart. But when you don't believe in the exceptions, I think it's much tougher. It's a much tougher issue. But about 82 percent of Republicans do believe in exceptions. I think the uh, and a lot of them are changing their mind and coming even even further. I think that abortion has become much less of an issue. It's a very small. I think it's actually going to be a very small issue. What I've done is I've done what every Democrat and every every Republican wanted to have done. And we brought that issue back to the states. And now the states are uh, voting on it. And frankly, uh, some of the votes are a lot different than people would have thought. Donald Trump wants to end this culture war over this particular topic. If Kamala, excuse me, if California wants to have a different abortion policy from Ohio, then Ohio has to respect California and California has to respect Ohio. Donald Trump's view is that we want the individual states and their individual cultures and their unique political sensibilities to make these decisions because we don't want to have a nonstop federal conflict over this issue, the federal government ought to be focused on getting food prices down. He went from bragging about overturning Roe v. Wade, he went from bragging about that to now saying that he would never sign a national ban. So much, he's so wrong on abortion that you have Christian fundamentalists telling him to stop talking about it. Stop talking about it because he's doing that bad. So I'm confused at what Kellyanne Conway is trying to say, other than unless she's trying to get back in the graces of Donald Trump to prepare to get herself back into the White House if he is to win an election. Here's the problem. Abortion is on the ballot and the Republicans have not won on abortions since they cheated and stacked the courts. Meaning every time the people have a say, even in red states like Ohio, every time the people have a say, Women's right to choose always win. The only way conservatives get their way with the controlling a woman's body is to stack the court with people who aren't elected officials that have lifetime appointments making decisions for women. That is the disgusting nature of Republican success as it pertains to women's bodies and women's choice. 
So when Kellyanne Conway looks at the camera and tells the world that Donald Trump is doing great and J.D. Vance is right on abortion, I'm completely confused. And then this narrative she's trying to paint about women having choice and excluding really women's right to have a choice is some type of dystopia that I don't want to be a part of. We need to get serious and call these people out. Kellyanne Conway is a joke. A joke. And for her to be a woman acting as if Donald Trump and J.D. Vance are right on women's right to choose is dastardly at best. I'm Mundell Robinson.